Welcome to the Bachelor Universe Podcast. I am your host, Jim Alexander, and we are back with the podcast for a new season, which has started again. This time it is Rachel, Rachel the Bachelorette. So the show is back in full swing. We know what that means. A lot more shenanigans, craziness, just insane people in general. So that is all coming your way. We're going to talk and dissect the first episode, the premiere of Rachel's love story. So will it be a love story? We'll find out. But we will talk about it right here. I'm going to recap the episode, give you my thoughts on it. Then we're going to give some season predictions and who is going to make it to the finals and be the one in the end. So we're going to do all that. And then there's some news on Ben and Lauren that I want to share with you guys. So all that coming up. And uh, let's get to it. Season 13 of The Bachelorette. Right upon us. Rachel's a bachelorette. It almost seemed as if it was yesterday that I spoke to you about Nick Vial's love story coming to an end. Yes, with Vanessa. So, as always, we get the season intro uh, with Rachel this time around. It's the same thing. Kind of give you a side of her, a little preview of what she's about, what she likes, uh, what she's looking for. I mean, there's something about her, though, that kind of gives me off the whole Andy Dorfman vibe. And then not only the whole attorney thing. It's just like they kind of have these similar personalities, uh, like a little bit kind of overconfident but humble in this weird way where – they're so sure of themselves that it comes off in a snobbish kind of arrogant way, but yet they're nice. I, I don't know. It just seems like they both have that going on for them, like this kind of a brashness to them. Uh, you know, also being intelligent, well-spoken, educated, and uh, boring. I'd say that's what separates Rachel. She's kind of boring. She's somewhat monotone, and when she tries to be excited, she's overly excited. So... I don't know. I've never had a good feeling about her since uh, she got selected as, that, as Bachelorette. So, yeah, we see the whole package of her, uh, you know, being the Bachelorette and posing for photos and all that. One thing that still hasn't changed that should have changed. Rachel, the tooth gap. Invisalign. That's all I got to say. Get some Invisalign. That is going to help you a ton, girl. Just get some Invisalign. You'll be all good. But apparently the memo hasn't gotten to her. Okay, so this one episode didn't really waste much time. We know what to expect. We know we're going to get next to the packages and little video vignettes of these guys. Now, we met some of these guys uh, at after the final rose, after Nick's. They brought out a few of these guys into to meet her live, this impromptu thing. Um, so we get these little packages. So, uh, we get one from Jack Stone, Jack Stone, cool name. Uh, sounds like a, um, spy, you know, like a guy that would be, you know, not Jack Ryan, but something along those lines. Right. So we get Jack Stone. Um, he's a lawyer and he has a cool dog. These are things to note. Uh, Next was Alex, who's like a meathead from Detroit that he claims to be like a nerd. He's just a meathead. And I think he's Greek from what it seems. He's Euro, so that's cool. Um, next up, there's a guy named Mojit. No, not Mojitos. I know you guys want to grab a drink right now or thinking about No, not Mojitos. It's Mojit. And he's of uh, Indian descent. He's like super Bollywood. Like in the clip, he's like dancing and with his family and all, so the guy is getting down. Um, he's got decent moves. Um, next, we get the freak of the season. You know, there's always a crazy, there's the Bachelor super fan um, last time around. Remember that guy? Who does? But this time around is a dude that keeps on yelling, waboom, waboom, like an idiot. Like, it's so dumb. So he just, his trademark is waboom. Just a loser. I mean, let's simply put it that. Then we have a guy named Blake. Um, he is sex-driven. So 
he's a sex guy. Uh, he's got apparently some PhD in sex, which is what he claims, which he probably doesn't. And he, he's been called the amazing penis. Uh, no, you called yourself that dude. No one called you that. Trust me. This was not something that any woman would claim to or be proud of saying. So no, you're not what you think. You're just penis for being lame. Okay, so that's kind of like the package vignettes. These are the guys. Clearly exciting. So then, uh, of course, every every Bachelor Bachelorette get that pep talk from the previous season's people. So who joins uh, Rachel? When we get a pep talk from the visiting Alexis, the shark girl, we get Raven. Christina is there. And you have that hot girl that no one knows last year that kind of made it far. They kept on skidding, getting through. I still don't remember her name. And then you had Corinne there. Like Corinne. They, they had to find a reason to bring her in there. So yeah, Corinne was there to give a device to Rachel about finding love. I'll let you just like digest that for a second. Corinne is giving advice to Rachel how to date. Okay. Enough said. Okay, now to the fun part. The limo arrivals. This is probably one of the most anticipated parts of every season is the limo arrivals. See what crazies and what kind of things they come up with. First guy is Peter. So he's a dude from Wisconsin. He has a gap in a tooth also. So these two are perfect. Perfect for two Invisalign treatments. There you go. So yeah, the Wisconsin dude, uh, he seems kind of like a down-to-earth Wisconsin kind of Midwestern guy. Usually the first person to come out of a limo ends up doing really well. Think about some previous seasons. Lauren was the first one to get out of a limo, and guess what? Ben ended up with her. Uh, Last season, was it Vanessa? Vanessa could have been. No, I don't think it was Vanessa. But Needless to say, people who get out of the limo first do well. Um, So Peter, probably going to do well. Then we had Josiah, 28th prosecutor from Florida. Now he has a sad story. His brother um, died and like in a tragic kind of way. I believe he hung himself um, or something along those lines. But either way, just a horrible accident. And guy has a lot uh, to kind of, on his, on you know, backstory. Uh, so it's a sad story. Then we have Brian, uh, thirty-seven. He's he's an older guy. He's getting up there. He's a Colombian guy, uh, and he speaks Spanish to her when he comes out. So um, looks younger than thirty-seven, but that's going up there in age, huh? Then we have a guy that I know of. Okay, Kenny, who's thirty-five years old. As soon as I saw him, I'm like, I think I know this dude from somewhere. Of course I do. It's Kenny King, the TNA wrestler, okay? He wrestled. He was even on WWE Tough Enough. Uh, He's a pretty good uh, wrestler. out Now he wrestles for ROH, I believe, uh, Ring of Honor. I know you guys don't even know what I'm talking about. But here it is, wrestling and bachelor combined but yeah tna uh rest he's a pretty well-known wrestler so he's been on tv and all that so there you go uh kenny king is on the bachelorette then we have iggy uh a guy from chicago bryce who's a firefighter um he comes dressed as one and he kind of scoops her up yeah off the ground and like holds on to her rachel that is then there's diggy Yes, get in diggy with it. Nah, 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 Getting diggy with it. That's the only thing he's probably good for. So you can have a fun little uh, thing to chant, right? Getting diggy with it. Um, we'll see if, how far he goes. Then there's Kyle, 27. Forgot about him already. There's Blake, Blake K. He's like a Marine guy. Uh, definitely, you know, one of those... Guys from uh, the military. Then we have Alex, which we met him already, the meaty, a meathead nerd 
whatever that is. Brady, uh, 29-year-old male model with an X. Yeah, don't even. I'm not going to even elaborate. Then we have Dean, who's 25. He's on the younger side. He's the dude from After Final Rose, the one that said once he will go black, he won't come back. Well, yeah, let's just hope you don't come back at all. All right, Dean? Can you do that? Yeah, cool. And then we have Demario, who's 30. Uh, he was another guy that met her that night and after the final rose. Um, so, yeah, he, he told her basically that, oh, it was nice meeting you the other night. So there we go. Bachelor finally slipped up and unveiled a secret that they film pretty much right after the after final rose. So this was not something long time in the making, clearly. This is something that just happened recently. So they see each other within days, not months, like after the final rose ended. Uh, but, yeah, he, he's the champ. He's the champ. Not Kenny King. It's uh, DeMario. He claims he's the number one seed in this bracket. Now, I don't know what kind of bracket. I know NCAA brackets. Those mean something. But no one's betting on a bracket where DeMario is number one seed. You just don't. That's that's a fall. That's a failure to win. That's a fall proof foolproof or false proof whatever you want to call it just a bad investment fred who's 27 executive assistant from dallas oh, from her own town uh but he's got something for her so fred comes with a yearbook like a school yearbook he opens it up and guess who we find no not only fred he's there but rachel so rachel was in his yearbook so he went to like middle school with her or something Apparently, we find out that she was his camp counselor. Now, this couldn't get any more weirder and awkward, right? Well, it just did. So, clearly, she's turned off immediately. So, good job, Freddy, um, camp counselor kid. Your dreams will probably never come true. Jonathan is 31. Now, to me, Jonathan is just the taller Evan Bass. Pretty much just a taller Evan Bass. A nerd. He is known as the tickle monster, though. So he tickles women. Uh, apparently, he tickled Rachel. He did. Not apparently. So that's what he's known for. And we'll forget him probably soon. Lee, who's 30, who's a singer-songwriter from Nashville. So he's basically a James Taylor wannabe. Or Brady, that guy that Britt ended up with. So yeah, pick your pick your poison right there. Which one do you want to be? You want to be James Taylor or Brady? Songwriter from Nashville, please. So overplayed. Come on, producers, like people, casting people for Bachelor. Cast me, do better. Adam, who brings a dummy with him. No, he's not a dummy. Well, he technically could be a dummy, but he brings an actual dummy as like an a ventriloquist sort of thing. Just he's not a ventriloquist. Yeah, I'm confused by just trying to figure that out. But yeah, he brings a dummy with him. Uh, so that's cool, right? There's Matt, 32, a uh, construction guy, but we wouldn't know since he arrives in a penguin costume. Yeah, a penguin costume. Imagine that. That's just odd. Um, then we have Jamie, 32, a lawyer. Do you, see, do you see the trend here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Jack Stone, remember? Ah, we forgot about him. Lawyer also. Uh, this is a quite a law firm. So Rachel and Company is what we should call it. And there's plenty of lawyers at your disposal. Mohit, 26. So Mr. Bollywood. Jediah. Jediah. Uh, something like that. Jediah. Huh? Yeah, Jediah. Let's call him that. He's. I think he's like an RN or something. So he's got the... Fun name, right? Then there's Michael, 26, pro basketball player from Chicago. Um, pro basketball player Michael. He ain't no Michael Jordan, that's for sure. Never heard of him. Don't know of him. Probably not a professional. And then last but not least, the one, the only, Vaboom, 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 Vaboom. Lucas uh, arrives with the speaker microphone uh like jimmy hart from the old school wrestling days looking like a clown 
so that he is clearly he is the biggest clown of the season. So there you go. These are the men. A lot of unimpressive dudes so far, it seems. Uh, no one that you would be worried about or if you was competition, if you were a halfway decent guy. So what happens next? We have, of course, the mingling before the <laughs> quick eliminations, right? So um, she comes in the house, welcomes them, salutes all the lawyers and clowns there. That's pretty much majority. Um I mean, then, you know, you have Dean talking about her and talking about how she's out of his league. Dude, everyone's out of your league. Okay, Dean? So, not tough to accomplish uh, or feel. So, yeah, good mentality. I mean, you lost already if you think that. So, cool job, Dean. Um, so, Kenny, he's he's had it with the ventriloquist doll, which is named AJ. So the ventriloquist doll has a name. Well, so then Freddy, he gets scolded again. Um, I mean, it, that guy just has no chance. This is going to be all his life. Rachel's going to be telling him what to do. But here we go. Who makes the big move? Who gets that first move to to get that rose, right? Well, that would be Mr. Columbia. Yeah, he made a move. He decided that he's going to go for it. Brian is the guy. So she was feeling him. You can tell. They, they locked eyes, and she was just smiling and gushing, and then they're making out because uh, he makes the move. So Mr. Columbia doesn't, I mean, making up for all the all the stuff from the Miss Columbia, you know. We have Mr. Columbia, and he is the right pick. You will not butcher his name, Steve Harvey, okay? Brian. Mr. Columbia. Um, so there we go. So all these dudes, the weird thing is like all these dudes are calling her their wife and like talking in terms as if they were like or like engaged or something. Just really a bizarre thing. Uh, you know, DeMario is just like head of the clown college. He's just such a fool. It just keeps on talking himself up. Uh, guys like that. You just hope they are gone soon. So yeah, quite the winner there. Um, and then the other guys are just whining about not getting a chance to talk to her. So they're just afraid to make the move to talk to her, and uh, whatever it is. But Wisconsin, Wisconsin Peter has an idea. So he brings her some chocolate, right? So that's a nice move, right, from a guy to a girl. Apparently not with Rachel because she doesn't like chocolate. What woman doesn't like chocolate? Rachel doesn't. Well, surprise. So there he goes. He tosses the chocolate or is willing to toss it for her. Way to waste some chocolate. Hopefully it's not good to either or anything. Really hope not. Jamie, um, you know, he, he tries to make rational sense of this whole situation and what it's like. So he compares it to... Uh, 30 guys descending on one woman at a bar and that's how it feels and that's kind of a good comparison because it does kind of feel that way so there you go you know pretty boy we find out a little bit about my boy kenny so kenny is nicknamed pretty boy pitbull kenny king you know and he, he just calls rachel dope so she's pretty dope right yeah, maybe. Ugh. Um, not cool. Uh, but he does have a daughter who is 10 years old. So that's what we find out about Kenny King besides his wrestling stuff. Um, so the first impression rose. Who is going to get it? Predictable. Mr. Columbia. Yeah, Steve Harvey, I did it. He steals the kiss, gets the rose, and Mojito... Not no, I did the mistake. It's not mojito. I'm thinking about drinking already. You see, I don't even drink, but mojito, Mr. Bollywood. Yeah, he just starts shouting out no as like Brian kisses her and gets the rose. Don't think it's gonna help. Go grab a mojito, mojito. And then we hear Jamie a little bit. You know, just talk about his douchebag qualities. Kind of talk about how he has a. Uh, Perfect hair and perfect facial features. Perfect douche also. 
perfectly lame. I agree. A lot of perfection. Okay. The roast ceremony. Who is going to go home? Who's staying? Well, we know who's staying because Peter's the first one to get the rose. Then we have Will. Is there a Will? Hmm. Huh. I don't know. Jack Stone. Jack Stone, man of stone. Jamie, the perfect facial featured. Iggy. Eric. There's an Eric. The loud mouth annoying DeMario gets a rose. We get uh, Evan Bass 2.0 and Jonathan. He gets a rose. Uh, Meathead Alex gets one. Kenny Pitbull King gets one. Dean. Yeah. So he's in a running. The penguin gets a rose. You know now the pickings are slim if the penguin gets a rose still ahead of others. Anthony gets one. Brady. Not Tom Brady. Josiah. Lee. Singer, songwriter. Fred. So Camp Counselor rewards her kid. Counselor kid. I don't know what they call him, but... Yeah, Fred gets a rose, and then Adam gets a rose, but without the dummy. So AJ the dummy doesn't get a rose. Does that mean the dummy has to go home, or she gets to stay? I don't know. Blake E gets it, so Mr. Mr. Penis, Amazing Penis. And then last but not least, once again, your favorite, Waboom! Lucas. What a joke. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that means that the producers were completely behind that call. She looked disappointed. She looked kind of disgusted when she was picking him and saying his name. She did not look happy. That means someone else went home. Um, and that would be Kyle, Blake K, the Marine dude, Grant, Milton, and Mojito. Mojit is going home. I thought Mojito was going to last. Disappointing. So then that was it. That's the episode. First episode in the books and the season preview. Now, the season preview looks actually decent and pretty solid. Um, seems like a lot of the, the, many of the black men don't make it further. So Rachel's into white dudes mostly. I don't know. But all of those guys don't get to make it. Doesn't seem like it from the preview. Uh, we know Brian makes it far, so he's seen making out with her. Um, Wisconsin Peter's also there. Uh, we see a little bit of Kenny and Josiah, and almost none of the trash talking to Mario. Thank goodness, because I can't do anything with him for another minute. Um, the finale looks like it's gonna be like in some desert or like wine country, like in wine country desert probably. That's where it is. Um, so the villain is not Waboom. It's going to be Lee, the singer songwriter villain. What a twist. Who saw that coming? That's just so bizarre, too. Why is he a villain? But he apparently is going to stir a lot of trouble. Um, wow. Guy can't play a tune. Sure can start one. Um, so yeah, we, what else we see? We see her making out a lot. She's actually going to make out. Not holding bad. Then um, Kenny has a bloody eye in one thing. I don't think that's anything legit. I just think it's like either some accident or like it's another stunt or skit. Like last season they did the whole breakup and slapping of Nick, which was all part of a skit at one of the dates. Um, but the biggest thing, most significant thing might be someone's girlfriend shows up. Oh, yeah. And she confronts Rachel, and there's a whole interaction. So someone's girlfriend will expose their guy. That's probably in a relationship. Maybe Lee. Maybe no one's significant. Guess we'll see. So yeah, that concludes episode one of season 13 of The Bachelorette. You know, always a solid episode, the entry episode, starting season episode. There's some stuff to look forward to this season. None of the guys seem like great quality or interesting enough, but we shall see. So, as always, the first episode means predictions. This is what I do. Um, this one is a tough one to gauge, in a sense, because there was no really favorites or, or people who 
were completely dismissed. I mean, besides Brian, who obviously got that first impression, Rose and Kiss, no one stands out. So here, let's start out with my wild cards. Who's going to just make it to the top six? So my one of my wild cards is Alex. Um, he was pitched early with that opening promo and... You know, he has the manly looks and the meathead persona and nerd persona and all that. Um, He can be one that sneaks in and makes it further, uh, even though he wasn't featured much in the first episode. Then there's Josiah. He was given a lot of time and attention in this episode. Obviously, he has a story, a sad one. Um, But um, he'll probably talk his way through this point. He seemed like an initial favorite, but kind of fizzled quickly. But I'll make him make the top six. Now, the most important part, the hometowns. So I have Anthony. He seems like he's in a lot of these previews, so I'll put him up there. Um, he's probably a contender, you know. So if you're in a season previews, you're sticking around at least for a bit. Then I will add Dean, of course. Which is, uh, we, you know, we've seen a lot of Dean after Final Rose. We got his own line about once he goes black, he won't come back. He wasn't much in this episode. Um, but he's seen a lot more in the season preview and makes out with her. So he's here to stay. Then we have Peter, the Wisconsin boy, who had to get rid of the ch- the chocolate because she didn't want it. Uh, there's some sort of sneaky connection with her. There's definitely something. He wasn't exposed too much tonight, but I can see him making farm. Um, but he wasn't seen like in all the previews to kind of make him like a legit contender. And then number four, of course, it's Brian. I mean, come on, he's a shoe in He's the early favorite. It just has to be him in, the, in the hometowns. Now, my finals are that I'm actually picking an upset. Yes, I am. In the finals, I have Dean and Anthony. Yep. Apparently, Dean will go black and he won't come back. And Anthony, I will have the shocker being that Brian doesn't make it to the final two. Something will come away. I just think it's more of a sexual connection and a physical one with him than with the others. And it's going to be like that probably. But he'll make it far enough with a physical connection. Uh, That is, we're talking about Brian. Um, so yeah, Demon Anthony, Dean, 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 Anthony, that could be a good name. Dean and Anthony seem like kind of like surprises now, but when it comes to it, they won't be. And the last man standing, drum roll, it will be Anthony. Yes, Anthony standing next to Rachel together. And now we know I'm probably way off as always, so probably wrong with that. And it'll be Someone else, maybe like Lee or Jamie. Ugh, no, I don't know. But that's my prediction. We'll see. I'm always kind of close, but so far lately, not the best luck. But yeah, overall, it was um it was a promising episode. You know, I actually expected a lot less. I'm not thrilled with Rachel as the Bachelorette. To just, just find her boring and not interesting. But, um, you know, but it was a decent first episode. No front runners besides Brian, really. Someone had to get that rose, right? I didn't see Lee being that villain, so that's pretty surprising that the singer-songwriter from Nashville became a villain. What? Maybe they have a thing for villains. Remember Joe? I think he was from Nashville. Mumble and Joe. But yeah, uh, so he's not James Taylor. He's the opposite, actually, this guy. Um, Yeah, I mean, I was surprised with some of the eliminations today. Didn't think Waboom would stick around. Now that's going to be so talked about on Twitter and everywhere. I just know it. This Waboom nonsense. What a goof. Why did producers keep him? Jeez. Um, I'm glad, though, that the Tickle Man, Jonathan, made it far. Yeah, we need the Tickle Man. You have to. And, and of course, Kenny King. You need to have me rooting for a wrestler. Kenny King is there. And he, he might stick around. I actually should have included him in the top six. Hmm, Kenny King. He's a heck of a wrestler. You know, you can look it up on YouTube and you see what I'm talking about. Um, But yeah, that would be my favorite person to root for. But it's a long season ahead. We'll see what happens. And 
first episode of Bachelorette, I'd give it probably like, you know, a solid seven and a half probably. You know, not that solid if it's a half, but yeah, let's go with a seven out of ten. Not too bad. So that was it. We'll see what happens next week and the weeks following that. So first episode is always exciting. Now, some Bachelor news. Uh, news arose this week, just in time before Ra- Rachel started off her journey as Bachelorette, is that Ben and Lauren have broken up. Predictable, predictable. These two had no chemistry. He made a major mistake by not picking JoJo. He's still regretting it. Surprisingly, she's still with Aaron I mean, Aaron Rodgers. Maybe with Aaron now that Olivia Munn left him. But Jordan Rodgers, uh, they're still together. But, um, yeah, Ben, you missed out. You picked Lauren, who was boring and not into him, really. Just, ugh, it wasn't the best choice. And apparently she couldn't deal with the lifestyle of being in Colorado. So she had to go back to L.A. to be a, I don't know, what she probably just living off Instagram, like the, a lot of these contestants do. Maybe she's a flight attendant again. I don't know. We shall find out more in this news leaks. But Lauren and Ben... Happily, not ever after. And not happily. So they got a TV show out of it. Guess there won't be a season two, right? Ben and Lauren? Yeah, probably not. Um, we'll get some. Maybe we'll get uh, Jordan and JoJo, right? We need to have some kind of programming with The Bachelor. So that's it. That concludes the first episode. Lots more to come. We're just getting started on all this. So a lot of interesting conversations and episodes on the way. More probably news by next week I will talk to you guys about. For now, remember you can reach me on Twitter at Jim RKO. That's at J-I-M-R-K-O. And you can definitely check out this blog that I write. It's called Bachelor Universe. So just Google Bachelor Universe uh, or you can go bacheloruniverse.wordpress.com to check it out there. Read all the inside and stuff I have and you can listen to these two. And of course, this podcast is on iTunes and Stitcher and all the fun other spots. So make sure you listen, tell your friends about it to check it out. All the support is very helpful for me. So thanks for that. I will talk to you guys next week. And for now... Jim is out and Bachelor Universe just getting it rolling. See you guys.